There are many different ways characters can accumulate wealth on screen, but the most entertaining types often seem to be the most risky. What I call them? Fun coupons! From investments to gambling, which really aren't that different after all, it seems, characters on screen often make a mega bucks by taking big bets and winning. You know, they call us traders gamblers. The world economy is just one big casino fueled by a giant debt bubble and computer-driven derivatives. And while these were ones mainly reserved for the wealthy, tech has allowed them to become more accessible to regular people. Decades of flashy stories have hidden away some of the darker truths about these avenues to wealth, or just dressed up even losses as wins, leading to unrealistic expectations in real life. So how close to real life are the portrayals actually? There are three ways to make a living in this business. Be first, be smarter, or cheat. Film and television have long used the idea of investing of any kind as a bit of a magic trick to make money appear. Even just an offhand mention of a character working at a hedge fund or as an investment banker is enough to justify pretty much any extravagant lifestyle. It's the industry most closely tied to the idea of wealth, and everyone around them knows it. CEOs, CFOs, investment bankers, corporate raiders, hedge funders. Axe murderers. Films and shows dealing directly with the finance world often bring us in via an audience surrogate who is also new to things, and so are still learning the ropes, allowing us to learn the important buzzwords along with them. An IPO is an initial public offering. It's the first time a stock is offered for sale to the general population. These characters are usually new but incredibly eager to succeed at all costs. And as luck would have it, they get their big break. This is the moment they're able to show that they do have what it takes to succeed, while also raking in a whole bunch of money in the process. This is, of course, a lot of fun to watch. The roller coaster of finance, with such huge quantities of money being slung around like it's nothing, can be a little nauseating. But seeing the main character capture that huge win makes it all feel worth it. Yours. 50 million at 44 and three quarters. Done. Fine. Pretty good. But this can also set people up with some rather unrealistic expectations of what it's really like to enter the world of finance. Sure, at major banks and funds, you'll likely be pulling in six figures even in an entry-level position, and even that can vary wildly depending on what kind of investing you do. But it's by all accounts probably not going to be a terribly exciting time. More recent finance media, post-2008, has started to be more honest about this, showing the dark reality of the kill-or-be-killed environment where being special doesn't actually mean anything, because there's always a bigger fish willing to take you out to save themselves. I'm sure it hasn't taken you long to understand the implications of this sale on your relationships with your counterparties and, as a result, on your careers. But whether they're glamorized or more true to life, these stories about an underdog getting their big moment are so enticing because, for so many of us, it feels like that's the only way we'd ever be able to really have a chance at attaining real wealth. Where would you put our percentage chance of ever making that top quintil? It's about 3%. These stories are comforting because they sell the idea that there is possibly some way we could make our way into this world and not only stand a chance, but succeed. But of course, the real world odds aren't so favorable, which we'll unpack more in a moment. If the focus isn't on a promising young upstart, finance movies and shows usually go in the total opposite direction and focus on a titan of industry who is at the top of their game and ready to cut down anyone who might try to mess with their money. I'm going to be in contact with the government and that this would be a good moment for him to step down. Okay, he heard. And I'm going to grind these fucking bones to make my bread. These characters are often used to show how money, and the immense pressure that comes with always trying to figure out ways to get even more, corrupts one to the very core of their being. What have I done wrong? Really? Except make money. Succeed. But as removed from the normal world as they might seem to be, these stories often work to make them relatable through their backstories, almost always stories of coming up from nothing which is what lit the fire within them to never be without again. My father, he worked like an elephant pushing electrical supplies till he dropped dead at 49 with a heart attack and tax bills. Wake up, will you, pal? If you're not inside, you are outside, okay? In addition to the wealth itself, another thing that often makes these stories so appealing is that no one ever really seems to lose. Every character needs to have something to lose to raise the stakes in their story. And in films and shows about finance, this something is often a nearly unimaginable amount of money. You're on a roll, kid. 
enjoy it while it lasts, because it never does. Money and success often become an addiction. They don't just want more, they need it. Their entire sense of self is tied up in not who they are as a person or what they do, but solely in how much money they're bringing in. They're willing to do anything to raise their gains by even a fraction of a percent. I can promise you that I am spiritually and emotionally and ethically and morally behind whoever wins. And they're also willing to hurt anyone else to save their own wallets. And you're selling something that you know has no value. We are selling to willing buyers at the current fair market price. Often, whatever consequences these characters face, if there are any, pale in comparison to the destruction that's left in their wake. But as far as they're concerned, capital is king, and anything that's likely to bring them more money, and thus power, is fair game. For those of you who've never been through this before, this is what the beginning of a fire sale looks like. I want you to hit every bite you can find. Dealers, brokers, clients, your mother if she's buying. These parts of these stories are usually much less fun to watch because they touch on a much more uncomfortable truth, that this is in fact how the hierarchy of the world is set up. The incredibly wealthy people at the top do usually get to skate free at the expense of everyone else. Banks took the money the American people gave them and they used it to pay themselves huge bonuses and lobby the Congress to kill big reform. And when all was said and done, only one single banker went to jail. And the idea that we could ever really climb our way to the top in that world is vanishingly small. We gotta start thinking like these Wall Street guys. You see what they did to this country? They stole from everybody. Hardworking people lost everything. And not one of these douchebags went to jail. But that doesn't stop people from trying. After being inundated with these kinds of stories about how greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Even if the moral of the story is supposed to be that it's bad, it's not surprising that people latch onto the idea that sure, it's a long shot, but someone has to make it, so why not me? Are you behind on your credit card bills? Good, pick up the phone and start dialing. I want you to deal with your problems by becoming rich. The explosion of trading apps and online resources means that people don't need to get degrees or work at a firm to learn about or start investing in a major way. This has led to some feeling like the playing field has been leveled ever so slightly. The big firms have such a big advantage in terms of technology and information and just sheer wealth. There's no hope for the little guy anymore. Or there was no hope. Maybe now. There is. 2023's Dumb Money chronicles the true story of Keith Gill and scores of other people who came together on the subreddit Wall Street Bets to buy GameStop stock in the hopes that it was their way to beat Wall Street at its own game. These guys, they have all the money and the fancy degrees and the political juice in the world, and they get it wrong. Are you out of your fucking mind? They got the advantage, and they still get it wrong. We see how people were so deeply pulled in by the idea that this was finally their big break, their turn to cash in on the stock market, just like they had heard about traders doing for years. And most centrally, people were drawn in because it was a group of regular everyday people working together, specifically not Wall Street bigwigs, but instead a bunch of little guys finally about to get their share. I wouldn't take investment advice from a guy in a cat shirt. Oh, okay. Who do you take investment advice from? I don't have investments. Mm -hmm. And if I did, I'd listen to like a banker. Just the way they like it. For some, the investment was lucrative, but for many, it ended up being just an empty hope. One of the most difficult parts for normal people looking to get into investments and trading is that the stock market isn't as easy to read as many experts like to pretend. Number one rule of Wall Street, nobody knows if the stock is going to go up, down, sideways, or in f***ing circles, least of all stockbrokers. As much as everyone would like to pretend they can divine where it will go next, no one really knows or has any real control over it, or at least they aren't supposed to. The real question is this, was all this legal? Absolutely not. It's not a sure thing, but a calculated risk, which is why it's so often related to gambling. Made a crazy risk to gamble and it's about to pay off. On screen, gambling is often relegated to the fun times and bright lights of Las Vegas, where characters roll the dice and win big. But in stories that focus on the gambling, we begin to see the darker underbelly. This year I made $125 million. I don't even know what to do with my money anymore. I have nobody to spend it with, nobody to enjoy my life with anymore. It's horrible. Gambling and investing are, at their core, rather similar. Betting large amounts of money on something that you've convinced yourself is a sure win to more money without any real concrete proof. But gambling is often framed as more lowly and a bad use of money, while investing is framed as intelligent and smart. 
hard. The main difference being that investors are generally betting other people's money. The exception is often with high-stakes card games, where the element of skill and large amounts of cash come into play. He played tight, didn't give a lot of action, and always got his money in good, which means he was running the odds. In other words, he was playing poker, and the others were gambling, and he won. Where in the finance world, characters often make it big through luck or brute force, in gambling stories, it's often a matter of outsmarting the house. It was in prison I learned to count cards. What separates blackjack from other games is that it's based on dependent events, meaning past affects the probability in the future. But we also see how that doesn't work forever. Like with the high rollers of the finance world, these stories often show how gambling becomes an addiction that begins to consume one's entire life, leading to bad choices and often unhappy outcomes. So look, let's bet on this. Gambling is the perfect distillation of our very human hopes of having our lives changed through luck or skill in one fell swoop. And in real life, it started taking over seemingly everything. Sports betting in particular has seen a huge boom in recent years, as people are desperate for a way to change their circumstances and maybe even make money doing something they already enjoy. This is me, all right? I'm not a fing athlete. This is my fing way. This is how I win. But the reality is that people are losing a staggering amount of money chasing the dream. Successful characters love to wax poetic about how they got so super rich because of their innate skill and understanding of the world. But the reality is that the biggest secret to making money is already having money. Oh, baby, this game is rigged, and it does not reward people who play by the rules. The ultra-wealthy can play fast and loose with their money and take huge risks, and thus possibly reap huge rewards, because they have all of that money to put in to begin with. If you're successful enough, People think you can do anything, and then you start to believe it too. It's hard not to engage in a little magical thinking when everyone else is looking at you like you're some combination of Warren Buffett and God above. And they have the comfort of knowing that even if they lose one bet, they're not going to lose everything. They have money stashed away in offshore accounts and tied up in assets all around the world. They might take a big hit, but it won't leave them destitute. Because at least as a rich man, when I have to face my problems, I show up in the back of a limo wearing a $2,000 suit and a $40,000 gold watch. This creates a safety net that not only allows the already rich to take bigger risks, but also fail upward. So, uh, I just wanted to get the gang together early in my tenure to say, uh, yo. Regular people who aren't supremely wealthy don't have this kind of safety net, and so can often get stuck with a much larger proportion of their assets tied up in a single deal that can totally wreck their lives if it goes south. For characters in this situation, their choice often feels like it's about something larger. It's not about the money. The stock market is not about the money. But regardless of what's driving them, the result is often the same. It's no surprise that we're drawn to these kinds of stories on screen. They're flashy and, if not necessarily fun, still thrilling. Walk away. I should. But then again, what's the point of having fuck you money if you never say fuck you? And they tap into that part of us that wants to imagine that there is one big break we could get, one big bet we could take that could totally change our lives and elevate us to the point where we don't have to worry about anything but making more money. You can't look at a number like that on paper with your name next to it and still doubt yourself. That's not logical. And of course, we hear so often about how these titans of finance are essentially controlling our lives and the entire world, so it makes sense that we're interested in trying to get a peek at what's really going on behind all of those closed doors. Big bank, small bank, I like to make money, all right? Let me put it this way. I'm standing in front of a burning house, and I'm offering you fire insurance on it. Plus, investing is often a part of our regular, everyday lives, just in generally less exciting ways, like with 401ks and IRAs. But in the same way we've seen a shift in how investing is portrayed on screen, it seems that there's been a bit of a real-life shift in interest away from the career due to its high pressure and low quality of life. Not even the mega payouts are enough for many people now, who are looking for new avenues to secure wealth without having to give their entire lives over to their jobs. Yeah, it's time to call bullshit. Bullshit on what? Every while it's obviously understandable to get pulled into wanting to jump into these so-called easy paths to wealth and success, given how terrible things are for everyone who isn't ultra-rich, the real way we'll be able to level the playing field is by changing the system so that it doesn't only reward the most devious schemers while leaving the rest of us holding the bag. Stop going for the easy buck and produce something with your life. 
create instead of living off the buying and selling of others. That's the take. Click here to watch the video we think you'll love, or here to check out a whole playlist of awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. And make sure to subscribe to our Patreon for exclusive new videos.